Ohio Congressman, Freedom Caucus member Jim Jordan. Congressman Jordan, um, I don't see the, the documents presented, and we now have all the evidence we need. Hillary, it's irrefutable, committed felonies, lead investigator struck, exonerated her long before he ever interviewed her or the witnesses, um, which means the fix was in. And then they tried to smash and destroy Donald Trump, the other candidate. And I can't think of a worse abuse of power or corruption scandal in American history. Maybe you can help yep. me out. No, no, you're right. The same six people, the key people who ran the Clinton investigation, then ran the Russian investigation. Think about this, Sean. Jim Comey's been fired. Deputy Director McCabe has been fired. Faces, faces a criminal referral, lied three times under, under oath. Chief of Staff Jim Rubicki has left the FBI. General Counsel Jim Baker demoted and has now left the FBI. Lisa Page, FBI counsel, demoted, now left the FBI. And, of course, Peter Strzok. Deputy head of counterintelligence demoted and a couple days ago escorted from the FBI. So when, it, when have you ever seen a federal agency where six of the top pe people ran the two most important investigations I've ever heard of? When have you ever seen that happen? So, yes, Mr. Goodlatte's exactly right. If they don't give us the documents, we are going to pass a resolution on the House floor. The speaker's been clear about How this. How soon? The, It'll happen next week if they don't do it. It will. Ha the speaker has been clear. They will. We will pass that, and the whole house will go on record saying, "Mr. Rosenstein, give us mm -hmm. what we're entitled to have to get answers for the American people." And then, if he still doesn't do that, then it's contempt. And then, finally, the ultimate leverage we have, an ultimate pressure we have, and you're is telling the, the American articles. people tonight, you will do all of this. This is not a game. This is this is if Jim Jordan give giving us his word. Well, this is, but it's the Speaker of the House. This is Devin Nunes. This is Chairman Goodlatte. These are the, the, the people in the House who say, I agree. we have yeah, a right I, to get that. And the full House will, the, the resolution has been filed by Mr. Meadows and I and several others. Mr. Meadows filed right, it last let me ask week. You this. That's what has to happen first. So apparently there was a little bit of a showdown and then on Capitol Hill on the floor today uh, between Mark Meadows um, and who's the chairman of the Freedom Caucus and Speaker Ryan. And apparently it was about the talking points that, are being fed to the president and the American people about immigration don't match up with the bill. Are we being lied to and misled again by Republicans? I, Sean, I wasn't a part of that. Normally, I would be a part of that conversation with Mark. I wasn't on the floor this time. Mark and the speaker Have had a conversation. Have you seen the bill? Do they match the talking points, which is what this is about? Here's, I haven't had a chance to fully review the bill yet. That's both bills that are going to be on the floor tomorrow. But what I do know is Goodlatte, Chairman Goodlatte's first piece of legislation is the one that is consistent with the mandate of the 2016 election, more importantly, consistent with what we told the American people we were going to do, because it does all the good borders, builds the wall, stops the, stops the chain migration, wait, wait, the stops most the visa, thing, all those good things. Okay, the most important thing is the money for the wall up front, all of it. It has to be. It has to be in both bills, but the, the first bill is the one I think is the best bill. That's the one I'm supporting. All right. Uh... By the way, uh, I know you were a wrestler, what, in college? You only lost one match all your life? No, I lost only more one? than that in college. I lost more than that in college. High school. That High was school, a long time ago, one match. And I well, Listen, you, I've got my second-degree brown belt, martial arts. I don't think I'm messing with you. Wrestling losers <laughs> are tough. I wouldn't mess with you. Thanks, Sean. All right. Welcome back. Barack Obama slamming President Trump on his policy of zero tolerance towards illegals crossing the border. A Carly Shimkus with Fox News Headlines 24-7, Sirius XM 115 is here with the online reaction. Good morning, Carly. A lot of reaction to this. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Heather. In a lengthy Facebook post, former President Obama marked World Refugee Day and also took a swipe at the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy, saying, are we a nation that accepts the cruelty of ripping children from their parents' arms, or are we a nation that values families and works to keep them together? Do we look away, or do we choose to see something of ourselves? and our children. But Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen told reporters that both the Bush and Obama administrations separated families as well, but at a lower rate, leading to some backlash online. Hattie on Twitter says, what else is new? We had enough of Obama undoing his mess is hard work. Dennis also says Obama had eight years uh, to fix the immigration problem and only made it worse with all his handouts. We have to turn away illegals you involved. 
invited. Now, there are no clear numbers on how many or if the Obama administration did, in fact, separate families. And Jay Johnson, who served as Homeland Security Secretary for Obama, said he did not, in fact, separate children from their parents. So mm. there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. Yeah, because there are reports, and actually um, there has been documentation that he did uh, separate fathers specifically. He would, they would come into the country in one area, then they would be flown to a completely different area and then de um, deported. It's a very emotional yeah. issue. Yeah. All right. Well, the man who created data, a uh, database of personal information on ICE agents yeah, has pretty, been revealed. The, yeah, that's right. A, a dangerous situation here. A web developer who also claims to be an adjunct NYU professor, he created a, a database of the names of over 1,500 ICE agents. His name is Sam Levine, and he took to Twitter saying this, I scraped LinkedIn for people that work for ICE. Uh, now, Grit Hub, where he posted that information, later took it down. Fox News has also reached out to NYU for comment because there's been a lot of backlash online over this as well. A uh, cactus says, fire him now. There is absolutely no good that can come of him remaining in an educational institution. This can't be allowed to continue. Jerry also says something similar, tweeting, why is he not behind bars for endangering a federal officer's life? Yeah. Good question. It's absolute insanity now. Some of the things that are being done on social media and somebody needs to step up from the left from the right as well and say, hey, yeah. everybody calm everybody down. Everybody take it down a notch. I completely it's agree. It's ridiculous. And there's so many examples of it. Yeah. This let's, is good, though. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about this. Something All good. right, yeah, an 18-year-old high school student in New Jersey could win $10,000 from Duck Brands for creating a, his prom tuxedo made entirely, entirely of duct tape. Wow. Okay, so this is Nicholas Madawa's uh, contest entry statement. He says, my prom's theme was around the world. So the first thing I thought to myself was that, hey, I love my country. How do I incorporate that into this project? And I think that from head to toe, I hit that feeling of patriotism that I was aiming for. A lot of reaction to this on social media. People are loving him. It's gotten some media attention. Uh, Maria says, congratulations, God bless America. Love his creativity and patriotism. Teresa also tweets, I hope he does win the 10,000 he deserves uh, to win good looking tuxedo. And another Twitter user says, he put a lot of work into that and it shows. Now there, he's a finalist, one of five finalists. So all the other tuxedos are very nice too. Man. His is certainly the most patriotic yes. though. We need to have him on, Nicholas, for sure. I know, isn't that great? Yeah, 29 rolls of duct tape. That's right, and he is a real fighter, too, because he was diagnosed with Asperger's and cerebral palsy when he was a child. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, so he's got a very interesting story. Nicholas, we want to see you and your tux in yeah, person. That's right. right. <laughs> what can Republicans pass on immigration? Good question. I guess we'll find out today in the House. Um, but I think that if what we ought to be able to pass, if nothing else, Bill, on the Senate is something that does codify the president's executive order so we can address this issue of keeping families together. If the Democrats are sincere that they want to see that happen, they would be willing to work with us to fashion a solution to at least address that issue. The broader immigration debate, which is parts of which are being addressed in the House uh, legislation today, um, and we had that debate in the Senate a few weeks or a few months back. Um, nothing passed. We spent a week on the floor. People had an opportunity to offer amendments, and we couldn't get a consensus. But that doesn't mean if the House is able to pass something and they send it to the Senate that um, we, we wouldn't look at it. We'll certainly uh, take a look at it and see if it's something we can pass and that the president would sign. Senator, what's the mood there this morning? This has been a huge week, and we know things got tense on the House floor, and um, this has been a debate that has spread across the country. Uh, emotions are high. What do you what do you sense is the mood around there this morning? I, I think the mood here, Sandra, is one of you know at least among our, our conferences. We need to solve this. We need to get something in place that addresses this issue of uh, allowing families to stay together. But we also need to address the issue of enforcing our laws. I mean, this is this is an issue, and and what we're seeing today is a byproduct of a broken immigration system that has been crying out for a solution for a long time. And one of the solutions, obviously, to that is to build the wall, build the border wall, and to prevent people from coming into this country illegally. And uh, 
the Democrats have been unwilling to do that. Um, they consistently talk about immigration reform, but to them that means, at least in this current circumstance that we're talking about, catch and release. Uh, they're very much in, in favor of a, an open borders policy, and uh, we think the American people believe otherwise. I don't know if I always hear it attributed to Ronald Reagan, but uh, used to say that a country that can't control its borders can't control its destiny, and I think we have to get control of this situation, and that entails having the security at the border that's necessary to help address and solve the problem, and that's what the president's been asking for and what the Democrats have been unwilling to give him. Well, you, you, you talk as if this is an opportunity, and you're probably right about that. But with an well, election I, less than five months away, do you feel the need to get something done? Or do you, do you think you can fight to live another day if you let this moment pass? Well, I, I think there, there's always another day, obviously, but every day that goes by and we don't fix the problem, the problem continues to worsen. I think the near-term issue here that we're dealing with just this week that the president's executive order addressed yesterday is something that there ought to be bipartisan agreement on in the House and the Senate to fix. And so my hope would be, at least, Bill, that as uh, this, is, this issue is debated, that there would be a consensus, a bipartisan consensus, that we need to address this. My guess is, however, that because it it is an even-numbered year, uh, and Democrats always view this as a potent political weapon that they will choose uh, rather to have the issue than to have a solution. That would be the way I would predict it would come President out. Tr uh, President Trump is asking a question on Twitter a, a short time ago uh, this morning that perhaps Senator Thune you can address. He says, what is the purpose of the House doing good immigration bills when you need nine votes by Democrats in the Senate? And the Dems are only looking to obstruct, which they feel is good for them in the midterm. Republicans must get rid of the stupid filibuster rule. It is killing you. <laughs> well. I, the, the president is right about one point, and that is the Democrats' goal is to obstruct. I think they think it's to their political advantage as they head in, we head into the midterm elections. But you know, the other you got to think about this the other way. If God forbid they were able to win the Senate in November, uh, and they could pass whatever they want at 51 votes, we would have a very porous open borders immigration policy. So the 60 vote threshold protects Republicans uh, it, it more times historically than it does Democrats. But I understand his frustration. We share it too. But it's why we need to have some Democrats who are willing to do the right thing uh, for our country and not just the political thing in the middle of an election year. Um, we have a reverse of course of um, what the federal position is now about keeping families together and at what point how we do that. Um, do, do you think what you went through over the past week was a big blow to you um, and, and others in your party? Was, was it a blow to the president? How, how, do, you, how do you sort through that now? I, 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 no, I don't think so, Bill, because the president responded. And like I said, I mean, I think as a zero tolerance policy, and the president made it very clear, this didn't surprise anybody, he ran his campaign on enforcing our laws and, and securing our borders and dealing with the issue of sort of runaway illegal immigration. And so in his attempts to do that, obviously, uh, this was something that came out of it, but which he quickly addressed. And we were very quick to recognize it as well and to acknowledge that we've got to have a policy that enforces our laws, but that also allows families to stay together. And so there was consensus up here to do that. The president stepped in uh, and I think did the right thing. And so I don't know. This is something that uh, I don't think has anything, any, any lasting effect. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are trying to predict what is next in this battle. Maybe you could do that for us. <laughs> well, I think in the, in the near term, what my hope would be, the next step in the battle, Sandra, is let's uh, codify um, this, the president's executive order so we don't have to go to court and worry about what's going to happen in the, in the way of litigation that creates more uncertainty around this issue. The Flores settlement uh, a decision back in 1997 sort of governs the way this issue can be treated now. And it seems to me at least that Congress, the only way that you can change that or get away from the uncertainty around this issue is for Congress to act. So the president, uh, I think, did the right thing and addressed it in the near term. It's up to us now to try and fix this long term. So, so you, you, and and you I hope think, there'll be Democrats that are willing to do that. Yeah, you, you think you can get enough votes to, to codify the executive order? That's, well, that, that, that's we'll, about as much ground as you have given so far. We'll see. I mean, like I said, I, I, this is going to be a real test of whether the Democrats are serious about trying to solve this issue and solve a problem or, or whether they would rather have uh, the political issue. And I think that's going to be, we'll, we'll find out here soon enough. Okay. When's the last time you talked to the president, Senator? Uh, I haven't talked to him this week. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while, but yeah. Yeah, just I, but, we, but, but, but we but he stays in constant contact yeah. with us, as you know, Sandra, through through his Twitter account. Yeah. 
All right. Well, it is a big week indeed, sir, and we thank you for your time, Senator. Thank you. Good to be with you. you bet.